Hi everyone, let's draw the diaphragm. So we want to start with drawing the median arcuate ligament. Looks like a lowercase n because this is the median arcuate ligament and this is the ligament that we find in the midline of the diaphragm. So after that, we can draw in the medial arcuate ligaments on either side and then the lateral arcuate ligaments. And then we're just going to connect this. And now we have something that looks like an umbrella. And then we want to draw the vertebral bodies. So this is going to be a one, the intervertebral discs. So that's L2. And then we can say that this is L3. So L1, L2, L3, and then just a little bit of L4. So again, this is the median arcuate ligament, medial lateral arcuate ligaments. So we know like any other muscle, the diaphragm is going to have muscle fibers plus tendinous uh, insertions and attachments. So we have some tendinous insertions around the xiphoid process. So it looks like something like this. Then we have some around the ribs. And then we have that classic central tendon appearance of the diaphragm. So within the central tendon of the diaphragm, we have the vena cava opening. And this vena cava opening will house the inferior vena cava plus the right phrenic nerve. And this is going to occur at the level of T8. Then we have the muscle fibers of the diaphragm creating an arch. And this creates a little hiatus for the esophagus to come out of. Now the esophagus is always identifiable via this wavy lumen. And the esophagus will also have the vagal trunks creating that vagal plexus around it. So this here is the esophagus plus vagal trunks. And this is occurring at the level of T10. Now, we said before that this here was the median arcuate ligament. And just behind that, we have the aortic hiatus. And this is where the abdominal aorta is going to emerge out of. And we know that the abdominal aorta is going to give off direct branches that supply the diaphragm from the top. And these are our inferior phrenic arteries. And then we also have that classic celiac trunk as well. So this here is the abdominal aorta. And this is usually accompanied by the azygous vein plus the thoracic duct, and this occurs at the level of T12. Now, back to this median arcuate ligament. This median arcuate ligament is going to play a role in suspending the diaphragm to the vertebral column. So we have the right cross that extends from L1 down to L3, and then we have the left cross that extends from L1 to L2. Now, if we talk about the medial arcuate ligaments, the medial arcuate ligaments will be superficial to the psoas major muscle on either side, and sometimes the psoas minor muscle if that individual person has that variation. So this here is the psoas major muscle. And besides that, so besides the vertebral column and the psoas major, we have the sympathetic chain with the sympathetic ganglia. So this here is the sympathetic chain. Now, the lateral arcuate ligament is going to be superficial to the quadratus lumborum muscle, so the QL. And we will also have the subcostal vein, the subcostal artery, and the subcostal nerve. So these are the subcostal vein, artery, and nerve. Now, if you just go back to the diaphragm over here and we talk about the other minor openings, we have two openings on either side of its xiphoid attachments. And these are what we call the sternocostalis openings. And these openings are for the superior epigastric vessels. So the superior epigastric vessels, meaning vein and artery, these will be the vessels that will supply the anterior abdominal wall from the top. And they originate from the internal thoracic vessels. 
and the superior epigastric vessels will anastomose with the inferior epigastric vessels eventually. And then the last opening over here on the left hemi uh, dome of the diaphragm is going to be for the left phrenic nerve. And that's it.